Man, this truck sure is pretty. Oh my goodness. You know, I've got to say, I know I made that video yesterday saying how, look how you can open that truck with one pinky. I opened that truck with my pinky because I had my hands full. You know, I was saying that, you know, this truck, there were things that I didn't like about it. it. It was really hard to find those things. And those things were not necessarily like a problem, but they were just like impracticalities that they just weren't necessary. Like the width of the truck, getting a dually more specifically, not the width of the truck. I'm always gonna have a stance truck, but like being the fact that, you know, the truck was a dually, being the fact that it's a limited, which by the way, if you didn't see, you know, if you didn't see the interior in the truck, this is what it meant by, you know, paying an extra 10, 15,000 for like the wood grain, the cool stitching, you know, and all the work, like um, the wood grain all around there and there and just the white stitching on the seats. You know what I'm saying? Like it's cool, but I don't think I would pay that much for the fancy stuff again. Not right away. That's for sure. What is up, Loud and Proud Crowd? Hopefully, guys are doing absolutely fabulous. So I'm sitting in the limited right now, sitting outside of the most boring place on planet Earth. Okay, it might not actually be the most boring place on planet Earth. I'm not gonna judge every single situation out there, but it's gonna be pretty close to it. The famous BMV. Yes, yes, we all hate going to this place. I'm going to share something with you that isn't necessarily good, but I think a lot of you guys might find this kind of interesting. But anyway, so I'm gonna go into the BMV. I'm gonna get some documentation stuff done. I'm gonna come back out I'm gonna do some vlogging today and at some point in this video I want to share with you the scariest thing that has happened to me with this 2019 limited and I'm gonna share that with you in just a moment we made it to the parents house I'm gonna go and don't you just love that DEF low refill you know it's not hard to refill it I'll probably actually refill it right now I have a tub in the back I mean you got to fill it up once every like 1500 miles 3,000 miles maybe but it's just annoying but in the same sense it is still on a warranty though with that Okay, so real quick everybody, I want to go over something that was actually pretty freaking like um, frustrating about this truck. Something that I had no idea that was going on. This truck right here, of course, you guys know I bought this truck back and I think it was April or May of this year, of 2019. When I bought the truck, it was down south of Indianapolis. I'm not going to put the dealer's name out there. I guess it was just an honest mistake, but it was, it was just really frustrating. So I buy this truck, right, and I leave the dealer. And you know what they say? Everything's taken care of on our end. Here's your paperwork. Everything's done and good to go, right? Well, guess what I just find out? I take the third gen registration a handful of days back to the BMV. It's called a BMV around us. It, I guess it's DMV for most people, but for around us, it's called BMV. But anyway, so I go over there and I get the thing registered in the business name and Loud and Proud LLC to get the title back so that the winner, when they show up, they've got the title in hand and they can take it home with them and ready to go. And it's all just sign over right there and they take it home with them. All that being said, I go there and they and I said, yeah, I'd like to register in the business name. And they said, there's no Loud and Proud LLC in the system with the BMV. I said, yeah, there is. I said, I bought a truck back in April or May. I think it was April. I titled my other business truck in the business. And I said, yeah, that was, that was months ago. They said, there's no truck in the system with that VIN number. I said, really? They said, there's also no proof of that business owning any vehicles in the system right now, which the only ones that would have been is this one and the new one I just bought because I just started titling the trucks from the business name recently. So they said, you need to contact the dealership that you bought that truck from and ask them why it was never registered in the business name and ask them why also plate was never legally transferred over if they said they did that. So I messaged the dealership and I said, hey, they're telling me that this truck was never registered in the business name and that the plate was never legally transferred. I said, is this true? They said, oh my goodness, we forgot. I said, I'm thinking like, how do you freaking forget to register this truck? Like, are you serious? Like, are you actually being serious with me right now? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what would happen if I got pulled over and they're like, oh yeah, your plate, it wasn't legally transferred over. And also your truck's not even registered in your name. It still technically is registered to the dealer that you bought the truck from. It's gonna look like I'm driving a stolen truck and it's gonna look like I'm driving a truck that's stolen with illegal plates on it. The problem that I have with that is that if a dealership makes that simple of a mistake and it costs me money and it gets me in trouble and it goes on my record, that's not freaking cool. This is something I just found out a couple weeks ago when I go to went to the BMV to get the third gen title. Luckily, I'm a law-abiding citizen and I don't go a single mile over the speed limit, and so I've never had to been pulled over or anything and I have a clean record, but that's not cool because that could have got me in trouble and what are you gonna say, oh, officer, it's not my fault. The dealer didn't do their job. Hmm, I don't have all the information on me to prove you're telling the truth. Here's your violation of ticket. You know what I'm saying? That being said, we're gonna go to the next topic, which we're gonna get this bush hog started up. I'm gonna get it warming up here in just a second. What we're gonna be working on is, I've gotta mow down a lot of this stuff right here get this cleared out along the fence. I don't know how many of you guys have 
watched Reagan's video that she just posted recently. Uh, however, Reagan and I are actually contemplating getting some horses. Yes, some horses. It's not like something you've seen on this channel, and it's not really necessarily something that I'm going to be filming a lot of, or really much of at all, but I know Reagan's probably going to because that's one of her big passions. And we were having the conversation. She's like, hey, you know, I want to get horses. And I'm like, we don't have a place to put horses. She's like, your parents have all this pasture that's vacant. There's no cows in it right now. There's no horses that they're watching for people right now. I'm like, it, like it, it's empty. And I'm like, I guess there technically is a bunch of empty pasture. So I said, well, I talked to my parents about it. I'm like, hey, if we pitch you guys some money to keep the horses there, to run water, to, you know, keep them watered, um, is that cool? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. You know, it's just empty pasture, but it's all going to need cleaned up. So I got to replace some fence boards. I just got all this manure cleaned out of here, cleaned out of the stall. Reagan did all that over in the stall. She bush hogged down on the tractor, that whole thing. And then I did this other, these other two over here. And then I got to go do some more right now. But so that's something that we're going to be doing too. Just venturing off, trying new things. And she's been like involved with horses, just like has had a passion for them since she was like eight years old. You know, it's one of those things where it's like when you're trying to talk somebody out of something a little bit, you can't make a dent. It's like, like her trying to convince me I shouldn't go deer hunting this year. You might think you're making an impact, but you're not going to keep me from going to the woods. Just like you're not going to keep her from wanting to have a horse. It's all good. It's her passion. It's what she loves. And so if we have the ability to do that, I'm a firm believer in pursuing all dreams and that there is no right or wrong time necessarily. It's kind of a matter of when you're going to shut up, stop making excuses and just actually pursuing what you actually want to do and finding any way possible to make that happen. Let's get on the tractor. I got to get some bush hugging done. Dad should be here in a bit and we're going to help him out. couple hours of bush hogging in however there's just so much to do um, I got everything back here behind the barn and the pastures I got some around the pond over in the backfield but there's just there's like another 10 acres to do and I've got to go help my dad with something else real quick I guess we're gonna see what my dad has in store for us today see if we can help him out with a few more things before we go home yo you know how it is with these trucks that ain't deleted you gotta fill them up it's a bittersweet about having a truck that's not deleted. The good part is it's not illegal and you have a warranty until I think like 100,000 miles. The downside is you have to do this every 2,000 miles. What are you going to do about it? You know, I couldn't tell if you were nodding your head because you're impressed with the dually or disappointed in the DEF fill up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah, you forgot it. You forgot what that's like. I mean, did I forget what I it's don't like? Know. No, no, you just talked yourself the other day. Yeah, that's right. He's got a permanent fill up. It's kind of like endless fries. So what was it? You didn't say. No, uh, the, the dually I'm very impressed with. The little blue cap back by the diesel, not impressed with. But it is what it is. Got my wife Reagan here. We are working on a post hole. I just dug this hole. That is freaking. Uh, 36 inches deep. So anyway, so we've got the horse stall slash shelter area back here. Reagan got this all cleaned out from the draft horses that were in here. But what we're doing now is we're taking a couple boards off here that are broke because if you can see that, Reagan's out there working on that, but if you can see that over there, the draft horse tried to step over the fence and literally broke that 16 foot board, just snapped it off. That's why we made this area extra tall is because their bellies were like right there so they i mean it was just they're just crazy they're huge we're gonna be trying to get a post in the ground here we're gonna be taking some boards off getting some other stuff done replacing the boards on the fence hopefully we can get all this tied up and today we can kind of get this area prepped and ready for reagan's horses this is reagan here as you can see i have the camera because i took you from my him camera, <laughs> i'm just gonna give myself a quick shout out to go follow rosine 24 v on YouTube, we're almost to 20,000, so I'd be super grateful for you to go over there and subscribe. Oh, don't mind me, just, oh my gosh. Just trying to get my workout in. This is a cowboy truck. Yeah. Oops, it's a broken yeah. cowboy truck now. There, now it's a cowboy truck. Now we got our saw. We're gonna 
cut some boards for the fence. He said it's for my horses, but he's getting worse too. So okay, I'm okay. Too. For the record, she's the only reason why I'm getting them. And then we have a fence post that is, I believe, six inches. Six inch diameter, eight feet length. Yep, technically the Amish, their horses, broke this fence originally, so, so now we have what we're to. Going to do. Oh, look at you. Aren't you a man Bunyan. now, carrying a fence post? Don't be Paul Bunyan for a reason. Do we have the level? It no. might be pretty darn perfect just like that. As you can see, I do a ton of hard work. I clean this all out. And it was like three inches you know, deep of manure and mud. So that's all cleaned out. I did that part. I helped him bush hog yesterday. I know he probably didn't say anything about that. Left side field over there. I don't know if you can see that, but that left side field. And then he did this field. And then this is gonna be like our riding field, I guess you would call it. So they're not gonna really graze out here. It's just more for riding. We're just gonna get on to working around, you know, putting the cowboy truck to work, as he says. Somebody I don't know. I feel like Nasty Red is more of a cowboy truck. I got the five board fence put up here, and you might be wondering why five board? You know, most people do three. At most people usually do four, why five? Well, we had draft horses in here for a while, and my dad had made them all five high just because of that. Now, do we need that? Are we gonna be putting them in here anymore? No, but I just you know figured something he would probably do is if every other board in the area, you know, every other section of fence in the area is five high then I should probably just make it the same as all the others. So that's what I did and I had enough posts to go around. Anyhow, you know, I boxed in the corner and yes, we leveled everything, checked how straight everything was and everything perfect and the spacing is good. So um, anyway, in terms of that, we got that done. We got the gate on we did concrete that post in. Um, that's just something that we do for our corner posts. But anyway, so we got the gate on uh, and we got Two more boards put in down there. You can see they're new, two top ones. And then we've also got a couple more along this fence that are put in. So overall, it didn't take too long. What, an hour and a half, maybe? Well, are we counting the whole time for everything? <laughs> whole time for everything, more than an hour and a half. But it wasn't hard to do, just some basic, simple stuff. But I'm gonna have to fix the fitting on that because one of those draft horses just tripped on that and literally ripped it out of the ground. So I'm gonna have to replace the fitting on that, reconnect the hose so it's all good to go and it'll work like it should. And then we're gonna be ready. Get some horses, aren't we? Yep. Yeah, it's definitely been a chore looking for the right ones. And for me, I want one of like the kitty horses that are like super broke because I don't know anything about horses. And I want to like get like a horse that's like a wild animal, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how to handle it. I think you guys know what I'm trying to say. I don't know how I am with horses yet. I know that we've had horses, we've watched horses, we've done stuff like that. But in terms of like riding daily, I don't know. I'm going to let her find the right horse for me and for herself. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the vlog. A little bit something different, but I just figured, you know, what the heck, I'm just going to take the camera film some of the crap that we normally wouldn't have filmed and then just see what you guys think about it. Anyways guys, do not forget you were down to the last three or four days. Three. Tomorrow's three? Today's Are you sure? Four. Three or four days left to enter to win the Silver Bullet 3rd Gen. I will leave the end screen, the last thing that you see of this video. Don't skip it because it's going to be really good. It's a really dramatic, cool outro of the 3rd Gen. Thank you guys so much. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.